Hello everyone, Nubkex here, welcome back to Nubraids. We're back with some Hydra content. It's been a little while, but we're diving back in here for the start of Rotation 4, again, of Hydra Clan Boss. And today we're running a team, which the, the core of the team really is double Michinakis, running two in the same team. Uh, this was inspired by Joshua from my Discord. So we're going to uh, take a look at his version of the team as well. I'll tell you straight, straight, away, straight away right now. He had slightly better champions and his version of the team is better than mine. But still, I'm really happy with this team. I was really impressed with its performance and the synergies uh, and all of that. Yeah, I mean, this is a team, honestly, I hadn't thought of myself where for me, kind of looking at it as, as trying to build three different teams, I'd often be splitting up the Michinakis, one Michinaki for each difficulty. I didn't actually think about running the two together. When I, when I saw him do it though, immediately it clicks because you guys know from my Curse City series, how much I've been running two Michinakis in Curse City and it's a really strong combo there. So I said, yeah, actually that makes a lot of sense for Hydra. Let's see how the two do when they're in together. Or then likewise, combining both Sifi and um, Nekmothar for this particular team, you know, two of the, my best increased speed champions. It's normally something I wouldn't do. I'd be trying to split the, uh, the increased speed across multiple difficulties. But I think this actually works really well. And uh, yeah, I think it really paid off. So one thing that, you know, I put this in, this is uh, like for, for, me, for me, right? Using the Hell Hades optimizer. So for the champions on my account, Oh, spoiler, <laughs> that was me because I'm running it right now. Spoiler. <laughs> uh, but previously, the best ones were, you know, that I was seeing. Again, this is a similar team to what we're running. We've got the Ugo, the Nekmo, the Michinaki, the Noose. They're sort of very similar things here. People are more hitting, you know, 130 to 180 million. I think my personal record on Nightmare Hydra before this actually was 180 million. And typically on auto, I was doing, I t tend to just slap things in full auto, right? And I think I was actually doing um, something along the lines of like around 100, 120 million, just pure full auto, for instance. Uh, and that's fine. This is not a pure full auto run. Like we're leaving it run on auto, but I was clicking heads when they devoured somebody. And then the, also the other thing we're doing, it's a really fun bit of tech with Michinaki. Uh, because we got one Michinaki in Provoke, I actually think probably in a perfect world, if I had enough Provoke gears to go all around, we'd have both of them in Provoke. I think it would be incredibly cool. Uh, but because of Provoke on Michinaki, uh, if you do not have, like, let's say right here, we are missing. This is not great because he's just respawned. But you could start targeting him so long as he has Hex on. Uh, and then the Provoke Michinaki is going to have his chance to proc his passive and get that free attack off every single time. And that can place, excuse me, can place the provoke and can actually lock him down. doesn't matter right here because, you know, th there's only this other head and he's basically dead anyway. So we don't really care. But it's a cool little thing, right? I've talked about Michinaki before. I've talked about that being my favorite set on him, which is, uh, yeah, I, I just really like it, especially because he's pumping out AoEs. So you naturally have all those provoke chances. Um... And then, yeah, his passive is giving him a whole bunch of extra provoke chances. That works really well if you're willing to do a little bit of manual targeting. It still works well otherwise, but especially well if you're willing to do some manual targeting. So how do what do we have going on in this team? How does it work? Well, we've obviously got our key buffs of increased speed, decreased speed from Nekmothar. We even have a backup increased speed from Sifi. Or I don't know which one is the main increased speed you can decide amongst yourselves. They're both doing it. Nekmothar's got a shorter cooldown. I'm saying he's the main, but they're, they're both bringing us really good coverage of increased speed. Nekmo's really good coverage of decreased speed. Uh, we've got block buffs. From Ugo, we actually have three, that's right, three champions with decreased defense. That's Ugo and the two Michinakis. We have four, it's four, right? Four champions with decreased attack. The two Michinakis, Nekmothar, and then I think Noose on his A2 is decreased attack as well, right? I think it's decreased attack weaken. Is that correct? I think it is. So we've got multiple decreased attack. We've got sort of all the key buffs. And then we've got burns coming in from the Michinaki A1s uh, as well. Um, but yeah, decreased defense and weaken, both in there, thanks to Newt, uh, and so on. Other key sets we've got in there, I have got Newt in Relentless. I think this helps a lot, actually. Um, it removes a bit of the randomness, or it adds more randomness in a positive way. Let's say it like that, where 
counterattack getting stolen is really annoying and that's going to happen if you use his a2 and you don't have him built with a ton of resistance and you need about 500 resist to be super reliable here um on nightmare hydra so that's not something i want to do i potentially could do it but it's just very very gear intensive so i decided not to do that um you could run newt as a mischief tank and that would be pretty effective here uh you take him out of relentless in that case maybe put him in reflex and have him just do his a2 as normal it'd be great but we've got him in relentless it brings a weekend and uh yeah that's happening um that, that's sort of simple simple enough. But with the hexes for Michinaki, of course, I didn't mention we've got two sources of the hex. Both Michinakis can also remove buffs from the enemy, which is very, very helpful. And uh, yeah, the hex is going to scale well with all the extra Michinaki passive A1s. It's going to scale well with Newt and uh, his single target nukes, his, his Newt nukes. Uh, they'll scale well. And that's yeah, simple, straightforward. You can see at this point in the run, we were doing uh, about 1 million-ish damage per turn. Slightly above that, but roughly that. I think at one point it fell slightly below. Uh, uh, maybe no, maybe it never fell slightly below. But then we also picked up some speed. One crucial thing as well, I forgot to mention with Sifi, she's bringing increased defense. That's a pretty big deal because the increased defense is upping both of the Michinaki's damage. And that's actually, if we go to a point where we've got, okay, we're coming up. We've got some decapitated heads here. Let's see. So we're hitting that with an A1. Like we're getting about 250,000 hits. We, I think we didn't even have increased defense right there. Yeah, like they're hitting for, when they've got increased defense and you've got all these debuffs out, right? Those Michinakis are hitting for like 300, 400,000. Uh, the increased defense from Sifi is adding a lot of extra damage onto them. She's also, Sifi, by the way you build her, she's going to be a very fast champion as well. She does her buffs and then she's got three turns of A1s and she's very fast. That synergizes really well with the Michinakis. So it is a very strong combo. You could run someone else, of course, like... I'd say, honestly, <laughs> you know who would be brilliant? Replacement? Shamrock would work just fine. He's got, again, the increased speed. He also brings decreased speed as well, actually. And then he could remove the Nekmothar. Use Shamrock instead. You just have to make sure that you've got a tanky, you know, tanky team and that they're not going to die. I think they wouldn't, probably, with a Shamrock. He could probably get away just fine. So you could probably switch out CP for Shamrock. He brings increased defense and speed on a shorter cooldown. It probably works better. And uh, probably brings enough decrease speed by himself as well. Something that's worth considering. Lots of variations to do with this team. But look, how do we do in the end if we keep pushing forwards? Um, I think this team would do worse full auto. Like, uh, Also worth mentioning, one thing that we certainly lost out on with Newt. Newt does so much better on manual. Uh, or at least to manual his A3. Because his A3... It can't do extra damage against decapitated heads like other things can because max HP damage is capped. So you'd always want to fire his A3, usually into the head of suffering if he's around. You just want to hit the highest HP head and, and always hitting a head that's alive as well. So you get it closer to being dead. Uh, that wasn't something that I had access to here because, again, unless the head devoured and then we would. But yeah, we got pretty far. We got pretty close to the turn limit. Uh, but around like this point, like 280-ish turns in, they just it really started popping off. And uh, yeah, I think the new counterattack got stolen. He got a bunch of turn meter and we fell apart. Yeah, but we got close to the turn limit, guys. We got up to like 290 boss turns as well. And ultimately ended the run with this is my new personal record, which I'm very, very happy with. It's 352 million damage here on Nightmare Clan Boss, which is great. It took about an hour. Like I said, that's uh, it's it's an auto team. But you've got quite a few extra animations happening because all the Michinaki extra passives. That stuff does add up. Uh, and, you know, a bit of targeting. So, yeah, I was just, you know, watching some stuff on YouTube in the background. It was grand. And there we go. I think interesting stuff. We look at the stats here. Nekmothar with 17 million. He's not really doing much damage, but a bit of War Master damage. It's really the Michinakis that are bringing the heat. Um, actually, funnily enough, the Provoke one. I've got, I think, a Savage one as well. Provoke one actually did more damage just with the Hex and how the burns landed, whatever. Um, he actually did a bit more, which is funny. And then Newt with a very respectable 68 million, but Matt, like Michinaki ultimately did almost double Newt's damage there, which is really impressive. And yeah, like I said, this is a personal best for me. So I'm very, very happy. By the way, that is, uh, yeah, that's double, right? What you need for Hydra Clash, isn't it? Let me double check. It's also my biggest score in Hydra Clash so far. 
Actually, so this time, I think a lot of my clan are, are like calling their, their keys early, right? So we won't look too much into that. Like people aren't trying to push too hard. They're probably slapping them in full auto and going. But uh, it's, a, it's a beast of a key, right? Yeah, but for Hydro Clash, yeah, you need 650 million. We did all, over double that right there, which is, is kind of insane. Uh, again, I want to give a huge shout out to uh, Josh Yua. That was the, the comp that we were copying. He's got a few variants of it, but like you can see here, he's obviously playing on manual. It took him three hours. Like it's three times as long, but man, he's pushed it even further, right? 350 million. That's it's a great, it's an amazing score. It's extremely good. 435 million is even better. You can see some things in here. So instead of having an Ugo, who's not bringing us all that much apart from the block buffs, he's got Supreme Galak. So Supreme Galak brings burn explosion that's nice he also brings the aoe decrease speed he does a lot more damage than ugo so right the de consistent decrease speed void affinity uh yeah with the block buff supreme galak is obviously insane that sort of pushes it to the next level lady makage is a really cool one i've actually seen several members of on my discord now putting together really cool lady makage teams i don't have her yet on my actual account but she is turning out to be really good in hydra and again her a1 right number one she's got ally attack she extends ally buffs. That's great. Keep the increased defense on Sifi up the whole time. Brilliant. Um, Lady Mikage, her A1, brings in an allied Shadowkin to attack. Guess what? Michinakis are both Shadowkin. So you're going to be bringing in a Michinaki. Another A1 on top of all the other A1s every time she does an A1 as well. Just for fun. Because why not? Um, and yeah, you can see his team right there. And that there's the Krisk as well. Krisk actually did really good damage. I wonder if his Krisk is probably in Cursed set, one would think, to be doing 61 million. He has to be stealing some damage with Hex to be doing that. Uh, I don't know. Is this a, a a secret nuking Krisk or something? I wonder. I wonder. But yeah, there you are. So this was the team. Let me show you the champions, how we built them, what is going on. Um... So let's go. Uh, hide this. There we are. So first of all, we got Nekmothar. He is in Provoke. This is obviously very important. Uh, he's giving us the speed aura. He's got as many counter attack accessories as I can. So he, he wants to be fast. His accuracy is actually a little bit low. I, I should probably crank that up. I have been using him on, on Brutal before. So I do need to re-gear him a bit for Nightmare. But it's okay. We'll get there, right? We can improve all this stuff. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Um, Nekmo, again, you want about 400 to be super consistent with accuracy for Nightmare. Though that would include your area bonuses as well. Let me show you my area bonuses right now. Like if we switch to Hydra, we've got an extra 12 speed. Uh, extra 40 accuracy is pretty nice. Some extra stuff like 8% ignore defense. A few little bits. I don't have that much. I've, I, you know, I'm not that into Life Arena really, but I've got some. Um, I don't know. Is that more than, than, is that average? Is that more than average? I actually don't know. Yeah, that's it. And first mastery is war master extending buffs and debuffs etc pretty straightforward sifi is currently in five piece perception uh and then two piece speed i'm really looking to get her into more perception i think nine piece in particular would be really nice right allies doing five percent more damage for every buff placed by the wearer while she's placing block debuffs increased defense increased speed that's three 15 percent bonus damage from those michinakis that's pretty big so that would be a very big increase uh, doing that with Sifi, she has these uh, masteries. She's sort of built for are uh, yeah, arena, really. So she's very fast. She's very tanky. Um, yeah, it's Sifi's in like pre pretty much the best gear in my account, right? Because she's arguably the best champion in my account. So there you go. We've got Michinaki number one. He's the real star of the show in Provoke. I've started uh, farming more Sand Devil. Not yeah, Sand Devil. So we're getting there on his gear. But double uh, four piece Provoke and two Perception, and he is coming in. 258 speed, 5,000 defense, 98% crit damage. Now, his crit damage is a bit low, 212, 98% crit rate. Like, it's not super perfect, but obviously enough accuracy, so he does the job, and he's just slamming the damage. It's really, really strong. These are his masteries. More chance to place the debuffs and War Master. I think we've got the exact same ones on Michinaki number two. He's actually in lethal and perception. We did less damage. Maybe just because he's slower and the Hex is going out from the first Michinaki first. I don't know. He does hit a bit harder. Not crazy hard, though. You can see sort of the problem here. Using a bit, bit of my... Not my best lethal gear. And this is the issue. The gear's not as good. He's you know, similar speed to Michinaki number one. But he's lost a lot of defense uh, for crit damage. So yeah, he's getting the extra ignore defense. He is hitting harder. But because he doesn't have as much defense, he's fallen behind a bit. Uh, and his accuracy is a bit lower as well, so he's fallen behind a bit. So this is just more a question of gear quality, right? 
in, in fact, it should be easier because of the bonus crit rate to build lethal than to build provoke, which is giving you nothing, but just I happen to have some really good provoke. Um, a good lethal gear is more on arena champions. Um, but yeah, I, I, honestly, Minchinaki might be pretty solid for arena, especially when they nerf polymorph. He's going to be kind of a beast. Like, he'll still be good with polymorph if you want it. And yeah, I don't know. One, one worth considering. Uh, let's look at Ugo next. Pretty straightforward. She's just in Relentless. I think this works really well uh, to the Relentless. More turns from Ugo is more turns to proc the Michinaki passive. Um, and she is 268 speed. And over overkill on the accuracy, actually, funny enough. I think this Ugo used to be faster, but I think I stole. She had maybe speed ascended boots. We could Let's see. Can we ascend them with speed right now? We've got some. We've got some stuff. Now, nah, flat HP. Uh, it's gonna. It's gonna be a long time of farming chaos dust. Let me tell you to get to get this gear right. And then finally, we've got Noose, who's also in Relentless again. I think that works well to keep his counter attack buff up. Not very often to cycle back to his A3. Um, and yeah, again, extra turns for more Michinaki procs. So Newt's coming in at two five one speed. Fairly standard type Newt build, I would say. And these masteries. Oh, these were the masteries on Ugo. I think I've shown all the other ones. Uh, so yeah, that's that's news. That's the team. There we go. We do have six star uh, cruelty on Nekmothar. I honestly, they, I know they changed Newt uh, his A three with how it interacted with cruelty. I'm not sure exactly how it works. I do think the six star cruelty adds quite a bit of damage because you can reduce boss defense by up to twenty percent. That's a lot more. That's really nice, and he's firing off AoEs constantly, so it's really good. We have Brimstone here anyway. It did a little bit. Not much, but did a bit. And uh, yeah, apart from that, that's that. That is the team. Pretty straightforward, I will say. I wonder if this will last forever. Uh, the, the reason I say I wonder if it will last forever, of course, is with Michinaki. Uh, it is really bugged. So yeah, if we look at his passive. Oh, well, it doesn't say it anymore. Oh, interesting. Do you guys not remember? I, I didn't dream this up, right? I didn't dream it up. I, I'm almost certain they changed his passive to say this will not work against decapitated Hydra heads. That'd be so weird if I dreamt. <laughs> Am I been dreaming about raid? I don't. I hope not. I think they changed this at some point to say this will not work against Hydra heads that are decapitated. Now that line is gone. And it, it works. And as you saw, it absolutely works against Hydra heads that are decapitated and in fact contributes to a huge amount of his damage. A huge, huge, huge amount. So yeah, it's absolutely insane. It might mean that they don't intend for it to happen. It might mean that like, oh, it's too much work to fix it. Maybe they're like, you know what? Let's just happen. Be really good. It's fine. I don't know. But there's always the possibility this team might not work anywhere near as good in the future if they change this to not work against Hydra heads that are decapitated. That's when you get all that bonus damage. But right now it does work and he is beast mode. So yeah, there you go. Double Michinaki, a new personal record for me. Again, big shout out to Josh Yua. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.